Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we're talking about the remaining wildcard in the upcoming torrent of VR changes, and that is, of course, Valve's rumored new headset, the Deckard. As more and more details on the PlayStation VR 2, Quest Pro, and even the Pico Neo 4 emerge, I'm sure everyone is wondering what's going on with the Deckard. So today, we're recapping everything we know about this headset, discussing when we could expect it, and we'll go over some reasons why this could be a true game changer for the VR industry. Now, I know YouTubers like to throw around terms like that, but in this case, it's not hyperbole. Before we break into this, I'm really curious what would make the Valve Deckard perfect for you, so let me know down in the comments right now. There are, of course, the links and timestamps to all of today's topics, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, my favorite site for VR accessories. They're currently celebrating their four-year anniversary, and you can get 20% off amazing items like their Quest to Elite strap, custom controller grips, link cables, and much more. They even have snap-on upgradable headphones that you can pre-order, and I'm actually giving away a Kiwi Elite strap with built-in battery pack. There's a link to the Kiwi site and my giveaway down in the description. And don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start off with what we actually know, or at least what are the minimum expectations for this headset. Officially, we actually do not know much. We've seen multiple patents, but patents are not products. At its best, the patent can give you a great example of what a product might end up being, but at its worst, it's just a concept, an idea that the company thought about pursuing. Now, Valve has made some public statements that Steam Deck technology will be part of future VR headsets, and we continually see indications that they are working on a new product, but any additional information has been dry for quite some time. But we do have some minimum expectations for this headset, items that I can talk about with a high level of confidence, and that includes the fact that the Deckard would be a fully standalone headset with an X86 architecture capable of playing PC VR games like Half-Life Alex. Now you can assume that version of Half-Life Alex would be watered down and will most likely have to be highly optimized, but it will still maintain most of the PC VR experience. We can also most likely expect to see eye tracking technology as it may become the norm in all new headsets. But Valve isn't satisfied by copying what's already out there. And generally when they make new tech, they like to push things forward. So in terms of next generation technology, we could see things like BCIs, split rendering, or just a much higher level of computing power than we've seen in mobile headsets. And I will go into much greater detail on all of those items, but first, let's just check out some of those Valve patents. Now from here, we do see references to BCIs, split rendering, and even multiple different headsets or possibly a modular headset. Diving into that last item a bit more, we've also seen similar references in data mine code from Steam. There's references to multiple different models. Now it's very possible these are different prototypes that Valve is working with, or rather different proofs of concept, or they might end up being totally separate models, allowing the Valve Deckard to be in multiple different price categories. Alternately, there could be a modular approach. You buy the base headset set, and then there are specific feature add-ons. Now, I would like to see either of these approaches, as we could definitely use a more affordably priced standalone VR headset. Now, moving on to the addition of BCIs, or brain computing interfaces, this would be truly exciting new tech, but I'm yet to see a practical implementation. In theory, this would be a completely new input device that allows us to complete tasks just by thinking about them. In reality, even when they are functioning properly, they're currently just a cool novelty, which allows you to complete a minor task at an extremely slow rate. Staring at a button on the screen for five plus seconds just to make it click rarely feels like magic, but maybe combining this technology with eye tracking could be the necessary breakthrough. But probably a bigger and more likely breakthrough will come from split rendering. This combines the use of a mobile chip like the XR2 found in the Quest 2 and utilizing it only for some of the VR processing. It would take care of the headset and controller-based tracking and some of the game processing, but the vast majority would be offloaded to an additional processing unit. Now, I'm sure this sounds similar to how the Quest 2 operates with PC VR, but this would be a much more streamlined process and both compute units would be mobile. You'd eliminate the latency and video compression found when using the Quest 2 in this manner. Now, again, this is all based on the review of patents and code data mined from Steam. When it comes to official information, the only thing we have to go on is a few statements letting us know that the Steam Deck OS and its hardware would be instrumental in the development of their next headset. So let's move into my expected specs and release date. Unfortunately, 
I don't believe we'll see this headset until late 2023, and it might not even be in our hands until 2024. Spec-wise, the headset will most likely be similar to the PlayStation VR 2 with some possible upgrades. So assume 4K panels running at 120 Hz or higher with a 130 degree field of view, off-ear speakers, and eye tracking. And while this is a fully standalone headset, I expect it to have access to the PC VR Steam library, and it will also work as a PC VR headset. It may contain a brain computing interface, or it may be an optional upgrade. And the same goes for the headset. It may either be modular with the ability to add on new functionalities, or they might just sell different models. Those models can be quite similar, varying just in hard drive space like the Steam Deck, or may include some major upgrades. But what could truly make this headset shine above all else is its Steam Deck style versatility the ability to play your PC games on the go with the same save file with an overly acceptable gameplay experience, and then be able to take your headset home, connect it to the horsepower of your PC, and play these titles fully amped up is an option that cannot be understated. And if you already own a Steam Deck, you know what I'm talking about. When it comes to the Steam Deck, being able to do something like take Cyberpunk 2077 on the road with you, continue your existing game, and then when you get back home, experience it on your big screen with all the extra bells and whistles is just absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And the Steam Deck would offer this with PC VR titles. After all, hardware is nothing without the software, and this is where the VR industry could truly change. Hopefully, Valve has learned from their past mistakes. Last time, they gave us a great piece of hardware, the Valve Index, and only a single piece of software, Half-Life Alex, and then left the developers to fend for themselves. Now, this was a major development studio with excessive knowledge of the inner workings of VR hardware, so they ended up producing a game where everything else paled in comparison. If they care about developers or the overall VR industry, they cannot make this mistake again. So I would expect there to be some great launch titles when the Valve Deckard releases, and they would work with existing game developers to make sure their VR titles are Deckard compatible. Now, if you're wondering where these launch titles would come from, I'm expecting some sort of alliance between Sony and Valve. Before you stop and say these are two competing companies, that would never happen, just hear me out. For starters, Valve and Sony are already working together for flat screen titles. The vast majority of PlayStation exclusives have made their way onto Steam, including Horizon, God of War, Uncharted, and most recently Spider-Man. Both Valve and Sony make their money off of selling software, not hardware. So more sales equal more money. This is beneficial to everyone, Sony, Valve, developers, and consumers. Now we can expect most items would be timed exclusives, so the game would be available from either Sony or Steam for X amount of months and then cross platforms. But this would mean a major title like Half-Life Alex ends up on the Sony PlayStation VR 2, which is a major rumor that's floating around. And remember, Valve is supposedly working on two additional big VR games. So exclusives would jump back and forth and developers making higher end titles that wouldn't usually run on a mobile platform like the Quest 2 would have additional consumers to sell to from both PC VR and Deckard owners. It's a win-win for everybody and could be the biggest game changer to the VR industry. But I guess the biggest remaining question is how much would the Deckard cost? Well, unfortunately, even if Valve subsidizes this headset, it will still be quite expensive. We're basically combining something like an upgraded Quest 2 with a Steam Deck, and both of those products subsidized equals $800. So at absolute minimum, I'm expecting a $800, but most likely much more expensive headset. But I am willing to pay out the wazoo for something that offers this much versatility and gives me access to high quality VR games. Now, I'm not sure how you guys feel about it, so let me know down in the comments. But that was today's video on the Deckard. I'd also like to hear what major questions you guys still have. But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.